thank you for being with us. And I wanted to start with the obvious question. Human Fighting human trafficking is one of your top priorities. Why? Why is this so urgent in Virginia? Well, I mean, I think what makes human trafficking such a hideous uh, crime is it's multi-generational. Uh, it not only impacts the victim, but oftentimes some of the trauma from it can emerge even decades after they've been through being a victim of human trafficking and impacts them. It impacts their relationships with their future partners and sometimes their future children. And so it is an in particularly heinous form of crime. And, and, I, and I like to say human trafficking, uh, tragically, is a crime that happens in plain sight. Uh, people erroneously think it's not happening in their community. It is. And oftentimes it's happening, some of right in front of you, you don't even realize that you are interacting and talking to a victim and I think it's really important to both raise awareness and then tackle it, because as we've gone over on the other side of COVID, one thing we have seen is we've seen skyrocketing rates of addiction. And tragically, what we've seen is the rise of what we call familial trafficking, in which family members that are so caught in the cycle of addiction, they're willing to traffic uh, their own child or their sibling in order to defeat their addiction. And so it is a problem that is uh, not just nationwide, but it's absolutely prevalent in Virginia. And the governor's commission, can you talk about that? Why, what's the mission of the commission? And then if you could list kind of the key roles that you have law enforcement and survivors and. Yeah. I mean, uh, Governor Youngkin and Suzanne, this is a, this is a uh, passion project for them. They, they launched the human trafficking commission where they brought in the stakeholders that are both victim rights advocates, uh, people that are advocates for trauma informed, uh, counseling for victims and also law enforcement and to both get the i'm a big believer the best way to fight bad information is with good information so the purpose of that we have representatives from our office on that commission as well is to make sure that law enforcement and victim services and local government is having the right information um you know the two largest criminal enterprises internationally the first is narcotics but the second is human trafficking it's 150 billion dollar a year uh, criminal enterprise, and it, it is unfortunately is drawn more and more bad criminal actors, organized crime into that space, and they're trafficking younger and younger children uh, as a result. And so, we want to make sure that law enforcement knows the signs of spot uh, spot for. We want to know those on college campuses know what to look for. Our hotel clerks, because as I as I have uh, said to those working with the victims, you know, you're on the front lines of what has become unfortunately, an invisible war, and it's an invisible war with casualties, and those, they're, they're innocent victims that have been caught up and being trafficked. And, and what's so heartbreaking is when you talk to those that are the survivors of human trafficking, a lot of times they don't even know why they're being, when they're being trafficked, that they're actually victims. They've been so abused, they've been so psychologically uh, manipulated, they don't even realize at the time that they're victims, and it, it takes removal from the situation they can realize just the level of trauma, manipulation, and control that's been exerted over their life. And that's why it's so important to make sure that you have trauma-informed counselors that can help them go on that path of healing. And that's ultimately what we want. Um, the victims ultimately have amazing intrinsic value and potential, and we want to be able to have them meet their potential and break away from this cycle. And let me ask you, if I may, about your appointment of Tanya Gould. Tanya is a is uh, not only is she a survivor of human trafficking, but she's been a passionate advocate for it. She was received a presidential commendation for President Biden for her work. She is uh, recognized, uh, I would say, across the country by those in this sphere as a leading voice. So we're honored to have her be part of our team and be part of that coordinator, uh, working with so many different groups, part of uh, meeting with some of our human trafficking task force that we are part of of law enforcement uh, so they can have that perspective. I think that's so important for law enforcement to be uh, more effective at their job. It's so important they have that perspective from those that have been through it. They get the proper chaining. They know how to identify the victims. And most importantly, they know how to work with the victims for them to be able to tell their story. And that's a lot of what, uh, you know, prosecuting human traffickers, what people don't realize in many ways, that's a way for the victims that have gone through this as part of their healing process to be able to take, um, to be able to push back and be able to testify and, and make sure the individuals 
that have brought so much pain and trauma uh, to them is, is held accountable and held responsible. Most importantly, is off the street, uh, not creating more victims in the system. And if you could relate, Tanya, to the commission, explain if you could kind of if you could list for us who's represented that you have law enforcement and you have experts. Right. Tanya is on the commission from from the Office of the Attorney General. We have representatives from the Virginia State Police. Um, we have representatives from the Department of Criminal Justice. Uh, we have a variety of individuals from uh, 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 that do a variety that work with victims on the front line groups like Safe House and others, Samaritan House and others that are representatives on this commission. So the idea is to bring people from all levels of government, state government, local government, uh, law enforcement, and victims and victims advocates together uh, to both tackle the issue, make sure best practices are implemented, and work together to fight this um, evil, heinous crime. Thank you. I would love to ask you about Virginia. So you talked about of trafficking in a larger sense, globally and nationally. How bad is it in Virginia? Well, well we've, we've absolutely seen an uptick. I mean, we've gotten through COVID, which is very traumatic, and uh, the level of social isolation has led to additional increase in addiction and mental health issues. And people get in the throes of addiction, and in some cases, they're willing to traffic their own family members to meet their addiction. So we've seen this uptick in familial trafficking, it's happening in every community, rural, urban, uh, suburban. And so it's definitely prevalent uh, in Virginia. It's something we're pushing back on. Uh, we want to both enhance the penalties, which we've seen some enhanced penalties in Virginia. Our office has pushed for, we're grateful for both additional training, required training for uh, people going through police academies, the Virginia State Police, so they can know what to look for to be able to determine that a victim is indeed a victim. Our office has launched what's called the National Child ID Kit, uh, where every single middle schooler in Virginia, middle school student, is to be able to get a National Child ID Kit that they can take home that their parent has available to them. If, God forbid they're ever in, uh, abducted. Because one thing we've seen is absolutely increase of bad actors that are out of state that strike relationships up with you know, 12, 13, 14, 15-year-olds and uh, they don't realize the person they're chatting with is not another teenager to meet up, and, and obviously uh, abductions can occur. So we've that's one part of the reason why we launched the National Child ID Kit. Um, you know, we 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 had over four thousand uh, per kits that are for sexual assault identification uh, kits that had not been tested, and uh, you know, we've gone through that backlog, that rape kit backlog, and we're proud that after forty four hundred of that uh, those cases that were not previously tested, 396 have resulted in new prosecutions. So we're very proud of that work. So um, you know, we've seen an uptick in sexual assault and human trafficking in Virginia. And again, too many people think, erroneously, it's not happening in plain sight. It is. Uh, we're proud to work with our friends in the, in the hotel tourism community that are training their hotel clerks, uh, what to look for when people are checking in the room and what to spot. And so a lot of what we're trying to do is get the right training in the right places for all the people at the front line to know to spot victims. So in turn, help the victims, bring them into the light, and then also empower them if they feel comfortable testifying against the person that's trafficked them. Last question about parents. What advice do you have for parents and community members, teachers, adults? Uh, what, what should we all yeah. be looking for? Uh, be mindful. Uh, your child's phone is obviously a great tool, a great gift for parents to stay in touch with their children. Uh, but there's, a, unfortunately, a lot of bad actors. And we've seen increasing a number of, of bad actors that are preying upon children. If your child has an Instagram account, set the settings or any social media account, set the settings that they can't get outside messages unless they're already on a safe friends list that you approve. Check your phone because the chances are there are bad actors that are trying to communicate with your preteen or early teen child, trying to communicate with them in an inappropriate way. Be mindful of that. And oftentimes what happens is they will also extort them, uh, get them to send a compromising photo, and then in turn use that to exploit them. So be mindful of what's happening. The Internet uh, it is obviously a great tool, but it's also a tool that has a lot of danger. And unfortunately, as a parent, you just can't be worried about the dangers maybe in your neighborhood or your community. You have to be worried about somebody who maybe is a state or two away trying to compromise your child. Be mindful of that. Internet safety, I think, is one of the most important things a parent uh, can communicate with their child. 
It's so helpful. I, I I must take one more minute and ask you, I, I, I spent an hour with Tanya and I interview, I've been a journalist for 25 years and she, uh, she, she was so powerful uh, in her professionalism, in her role at the AG's office, but also in her recovery from her horrific story. Can you give me a little thought? I, I heard Tanya's story um, before I ever got elected attorney general, and I thought she is a remarkable, remarkable leader. And, and uh, you know, I've said before, she is kind of the definition of what a quiet hero is. Uh, she is incredibly brave. She's one of the bravest women that I've ever met in my life because of what she's gone through. And I, and I told her she's an example of those that have been the victims of trafficking, what they can look forward to, that she has uh, uh, both described her journey uh, from darkness into light and how she has been able to heal and empower herself. And she is a, a walking embodiment of, of empowerment and overcoming adversity. And she's a remarkable leader. I'm proud to have her part of the team and I'm so proud that she feels the freedom and the empowerment to share her story.